right, here's the 411, folks. Just give him one of these. Welcome to episode 27 of the 411, folks. My name is Scott. I am here with Jake. Hello. We are back, yeah. and we are ready to talk games. Finally, we're we back. We are back, yeah. It's been about a month and a bit. I miss it. I've missed it. Well, so this episode is pretty much going to be about all the stuff we've missed. Starting off with the Nintendo Direct. That is how far. That is how long we've been away for. So... We'll just um, quickly go through all the things that, uh, all the news topics that we've missed. That'll be this episode. Wait, how are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, uh, forget, I guess I forgot my manners. Um, yeah. Jake, um, I'm good. <laughs> how are you doing? Good. That's good. Okay, let's get into it. All right, great. <laughs> um, the Nintendo Direct. So, we won't talk about, you know, the games that we already know about, you know, Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest seven and eight and um yeah there's others that we know about but we'll talk about the new ones that got announced first one on my list is mario sports superstars this um could be the game that i've been dreaming of remember that episode when i had a huge bitch sesh about um rio the real olympic game how could i forget yes how i said that every single event um is just a button mash game and why can't they just have a game with heaps of sports titles but have them fully fleshed out like the Mario Tennis Open and Mario Golf World Tour. This could be that game where they're, where they're making each of these sports included in this title a fully fleshed out game. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? I think it looks cool. Do you think that's going to be the case though? Or do you think they're going to be pretty sort of... They're, they're not going to be as, as detailed and uh, fleshed out as the um, you know the standalone titles? No, it looks like it because there's only four sports in there. Yeah, there's, there's there's golf again. There's, <coughs> there's um, tennis again, isn't there? I'm not sure. That's, I know I know there's soccer and golf. I thought there was three. Hmm. But, but anyway, even even if it is just three, um, how good does the soccer look? It doesn't look anything like Mario's. Is it Strikers? Yeah. Oh man, how good was that? Yeah, but um. It looks like, you know, they've got the 11 players on each side, so it's like it's the actual full soccer game. Um, but I really don't want it to play like the uh, Rio Olympics one, where as soon as you touch another player, the ball is taken by the opposition. Oh, so there's no skill involved. No skill involved. you just got to sort of avoid the players, and it's all about the passing and try and get it closer to your goal. I want it to have at least a tackle button I feel like I, I did see like some sort of sly tackling happening yeah there is sort of sly tackles or whatever but yeah if you come into contact with the player you lose possession of the ball mm. so that was I just you know I thought that was really stupid so hopefully it's something a bit more um, you know sk- skillful <laughs> involved sure. in this one so yeah but this one I'm, I've got it on my list to buy because I love all the Mario Sports titles so hopefully um yeah, it does me proud. Hopefully it's not as, you know, it's shitty as the Rio Olympics one. Well, uh, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. It looks promising. Mm. But you, um, you never got the Rio Olympics, did you? You never no, played it? No, I've never played yeah. it. I did think of getting the Wii U game, but maybe until it really drops down in price. Yeah. <clears throat> Before it. you get that, you need to get the Mario Tennis on Wii U. Yeah, again, that's not getting cheap enough. It's still... What, like in the 50s? 50s, sometimes you see it for like 45. That's cheap. Yeah, but from what I've heard the game can be, I don't want, that's a lot of money. I know, I know, but okay, put it this way. If we lived together, would you get it? Yeah. But yeah, because that's the difference. It needs to be, it's a, it's a multiplayer game, really. Yeah. And then I, I assume no one is playing online anymore. Mm. I assume that's dead already. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Pikmin. So this was the Pikmin game that was... I think it was the Pikmin game that was announced a while back um, for Pikmin 4. They didn't call it Pikmin 4, they just called it Pikmin, and it's a working title. That's not it's, That's not the actual title. But um, yeah, it looks really cool, and um, this is the first Pikmin game for the 3DS for a handheld. 
I didn't know this, but because I've never played a Pikmin game, but I didn't um, when I was watching all the gameplay for the 3DS version, I didn't know that it was like it was a 2D side scroller, but I didn't know the others weren't kind of oh. thing. I didn't I didn't see the difference, but everyone was going on about oh this is different because it's a 2D side scroller. The others aren't. Yeah. So the others are obviously, I mean, but, the same gameplay, but just in a 3D kind of world. Yeah. So this is just a 2D side scroller for the 3DS. Um. From the small amount of Pikmin I've played, this seems the the whole game has to the whole game pretty much has to change going from three D to two D because the idea of Pikmin is in you're in this fairly large open worldish area and you have to sort out getting through the environment in all sorts of ways and backtracking and and all that to get yeah. the goal you know kind of thing. But if it's a two D side scroll, you're you're just eventually just going from left to right. Yeah, there'd be no backtracking. Sure, there'll be puzzle solving and all that, but um, it'll be interesting how they can convert that mm. kind of openish style to a two D. A lot of people were comparing it to that old computer game that we used to play as kids, you know, at school. What's Lemmings. It? Lemmings. Yes, a lot of people were comparing it to that because of its two D nature. Sure, but no, that's not Pikmin. Yeah. Well, I don't know what Pikmin is. I've never played it. So. No. I mean, you just recruit all these little guys and they do all the work for you, like to try and pr- progress. Is that right? Yeah, well, yeah. And, you, you know, you send some into battle, you send some to build things to, you know... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's this micromanagement. Yeah. They're, um, they, they're colour-based, like, depending on what colour they are, that's what kind of job they can do. Yeah, you know, red ones are, like, fighters, mm-hmm. and, like, yellow ones are electric-resistant, that kind of thing. Yeah. But the whole thing is, yeah, there's it's like micromanagement, and then you have to... It, it goes over separate days, mm. and if you don't, you need to get enough food over those days, and you need to... The whole goal is like finding parts for your ship. If you don't find parts of your ship, it goes over the next day. And you play as Olimar, is that his name? Olimar, you, you play in the first two, but not in Pikmin 3. Yeah. And in the new one, was were you controlling Olimar? Mm, I think I think so. Yeah. I didn't really take notice. But... No. But actually, this sounds like Pikmin's... Since I have played a little bit of the first one, I found it too... I found it a bit just a little overwhelming didn't quite grab me but this sounds more of a approachable way to play Pikmin maybe yeah, for me yeah um, so maybe this will be my gateway into the other games as well maybe yeah which would be cool yep um, do you think this was the announced Pikmin from a while ago because they didn't actually say you know this was what we announced a while back uh, this is the game do you, or do you think you know one is coming for the NX I assume I assume one is coming maybe yeah. this is just like a, a stop gap maybe yeah one um, because well, we haven't seen a Pikmin game in a while, so this may be, you know, just... This, this could be even a um, a companion game yeah, right, to the NX. Right. They just don't want to announce mm. an NX game as well now. Um, Pikmin 3 was on Wii? Wii U. Oh, it was on Wii U. Uh, well, it was really early Wii U, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was almost a launch time. So, I'm not sure about the sales for that game, but um, obviously Wii U didn't sell... A lot, so I'm not. Uh, I'm assuming Pikmin three didn't sell quite a lot. So maybe they're just releasing this game because 3ds has such a huge ba- um, base. Yeah. Um, and then that'll get people into it to buy an NX version. So. Yeah, I've always seen. I've always seen Pikmin as a real cult, it cultish Nintendo game. Yeah, yeah. Like it's got a real. It's like one core. of a you know a strong IP for Nintendo. You know? Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah, um, I, I you know, <laughs> it's it's weird that it actually worked. Yeah. You know. Even if I always see both Pikmin and Kirby as they're like, they're two sort of not throwaways, but like they keep bringing it back. I don't understand how they make so many Kirby games. Like, who's buying these Kirby games? I don't know. Ooh, I do want the new one though. I've always wanted that. Planet Robobot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone talks about how how good that is. Yeah. The only reason I didn't pick that up is because it looks exactly the same as um, the other one. Oh, and you have the other one, Triple yeah. Deluxe? Triple Deluxe, yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks exactly the same. And, you know, one Kirby game is one Kirby game is enough, like, to be honest. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so the next one uh, came as a massive surprise. Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World. <laughs> um, this sounds freaking amazing because it has every single Yoshi's Woolly World stage from the Wii U, and it adds more mm. with um, Poochie. Who the hell is Poochie? <laughs> You know, Poochie from The Simpsons. No. No, Poochie the dog. <laughs> no. <laughs> this confused a lot of people. Like, people didn't know who Poochie was. Poochie is the dog. From from what? Oh, he, he, he came in on Yoshi's Woolly World. That's what he's he, from. Is he from Yoshi's Woolly World? Yeah. He's not from... 
He's is that where he started? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, oh. That's... no, maybe he was in other Yoshi Yoshi Island games. He must have been. I feel like I feel like so. Yeah. But um, yeah, just Yoshi's Woolly World, a cute game that just makes you happy, and it just got cuter with Poochie. And every time I play that game, because I've I've finished it now, yeah, and I'm hundred, I'm, I do want hundred percent it. But every time I play the game, I can't wipe the smile off my face. It's if you so just cute. if you just come home from a shitty day, you're in a bad mood, you just put it on, it makes you be- makes you happy. Yeah, yeah, it's a good a good idea. Yeah. One thing that I'm worried about with this game is one of the major um, entices for this game is its visuals, and it's going to lose all that. Yeah, being ported to the 3ds. I can't remember. You know, I can't remember the footage they showed. Uh, I've seen lots of screenshots since, and it's kind of you know pixelated. It doesn't. It just. It's not HD, you know. Mm. And what? Yeah, the big thing about that game was how it looks. Um, now it's going to lose that. Do you think it can hold up? Oh, for sure. It's still super fun. The music so, as well is really good. I love awesome. the music. Whenever I hear the music, it just reminds me of um, a Nintendo Direct because I, I remember two years in a row they showed this game and um, whenever the music came on, I'm like, oh, that's Yoshi's Woolly World. So yeah. Yeah, it's just the music reminds me of a Nintendo Direct. And Nintendo Direct makes me, makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, next one. Oh, by the way, uh, the last... So Mario Super Sports Superstars, Pikmin and Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World have all been put on my list of games to buy. Straight well, up, I'm going to buy them. Well, you're going to talk... Yeah. What about the next one you're going to talk about? Dragon Quest Eight. No, the, the one after... Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Dragon Quest Eight. I just wanted to quickly mention that it is delayed till 2018. Um, it was going to come out in 2017. And, uh, you know, I'm not unhappy about that because no. Dragon Quest Seven is out now. Um, and that's, you know... That'll, that'll probably take you enough time to do yeah. that. Hang on. Did they actually say t- t- 2018 in the direct? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember that. But... Doesn't that give you hope that they're going to prolong the 3DS till 2018 now? Well, I, I kind of knew that because, you know, Ever Oasis was going to be a 2018 game and oh. there's um, Lady Layton's 2018. You know, there's lots of 2018 games. But I, I'm pretty sure that 2018 will be it. Mm. Like, maybe you get one or two games in 2019, but they won't be major titles. That's a long life for 3DS. It is. It's massive. Because that's what it came out 2011. It's yeah. massive. For a handheld device, that is huge. That's almost reaching Xbox 360 and PS3. Yeah, I didn't think, I didn't think they were baking on it so hard. Yeah, but it's good. But it's with all these. There, there are so few titles coming out that we know of. Are they really gonna? Are they gonna maybe do one? Can they keep up one a month even? We still got Pokemon Sun and Moon coming. Oh man, and probably you know uh, Pokemon, you know whatever you know how they usually do a you know a platinum kind of thing with it oh yeah true well they they kind of stopped that didn't they they didn't do it for x and y so no yeah um Mm. next one super mario maker (laughs) this is awesome like as soon as this came out for wii u i was like where is the 3ds version this is a perfect 3ds game you can you you know bring out the stylus it would work perfectly, and now they've finally done it. I um, honestly, I, I wasn't too surprised when they did it because you know it had you know, it's a it's a 3ds game. It yeah, has to be. I honestly thought when this game was first announced, it would just be 3ds by default. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know because I mean, if, if, me personally, it's a little late for it now. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I, I don't think they've. It's just annoying that, you know, um, some stages, well, mo- a lot of stages can't be played on it mm. because um, of the Wii U. And, um, what, you, you're still able to make your own courses and put them online, aren't you? No. You, 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 can can't, make, you can't put them online. You can only share with friends. Okay, so you can't do that in this game. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't understand why. Why that's the case. They've got Xenoblade Chronicles on the 3DS. Surely they can match what the Wii U is doing with Super Mario Maker. I don't know. It's it's going to be some online functionalities or something. It's, it's kind of it's quite frustrating. It seems it does seem like a really bare bones version of the Wii U because the Wii U version now has so much to mm. it. Mm. It's 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 just... like the opposite of what's happening with Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, Hyrule oh. Warriors Legends is like the definitive version. They just keep bringing shit out for that. The the Wii U version gets the DLC too, but they don't talk they about don't, yeah, it. Yeah, they don't. They don't mention. It. I didn't. You know, I just didn't even know that. Yeah, because that wasn't mentioned. Um, there Did was you, some. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, you go. 
I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna move on. Oh, okay. Well, before you move on, I um, do you think, you know, these two these two ports of Wii U games for 3DS, that's that's kind of like the final nail in the coffin for Wii U. Well, yeah, I was actually gonna bring that up. Um, uh, I was gonna dedicate a whole episode to that, but we haven't recorded for so long. But I was gonna say, oh. is this like, you know, <laughs> is that it for Wii U? Like, yeah. they are bringing, you know, their major games over from the Wii U to the 3DS now. Um, all they've got really got left on the Wii U is, like, Splatoon and... <laughs> That's it, like... Twilight Princess? But you can still play Zelda games on the 3DS. You can, you can play a Mario Kart game on the 3DS. All the Wii U has got is really just Splatoon and maybe some RPGs or something, you know? I mean, you can play Xenoblade Chronicles on the 3DS. Not the same one, but, you know, you can still play it. You can play... Like, everything. Everything's on the 3DS now. <laughs> That's so sad. A Super Mario Maker was one of those really sort of big exclusive titles for the Wii U, but mm. now it's it's not anymore. Um, <laughs> Man. You make it sound so sad. I, I just, I'm just very happy I didn't buy one a couple of years ago, because I was very close. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm still so glad I have one. Yeah, yeah. It'll um, it'll be one of those rare consoles in years to come. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be expensive. I mean, a game came out today which I've been so excited for, and that's Paper Mario. Yeah. And the reviews have been coming out and all getting 7s and 8s, mm-hmm. 8.5s, and... Again, it's that thing I watched a couple reviews yep. or read a, read a couple, and it's they're always using that word. This is where we go back to Metro Prime. They're using the word actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's actually good. <laughs> because, um, yeah. Because people just wanted it to be an old Paper Mario <clears throat> game. Well, I listened to a half an hour review of the game, and, like, I haven't played any of them, but I know that the original Paper Mario and Paper Mario Thousand Year Door were the good ones. Paper Mario Stick of Star was a piece of trash. And people were saying that this has the battle mechanics of um, Sticker Star, but it has the atmosphere of the old games. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of, it's a mix in between. Honestly, that is the most appealing thing to me because uh, this is an unpopular opinion, but the battle system in the old Paper Mario games is so... It's just classic RPG battles. And so you I like Sticker Star battle mechanics? I've I've never played it, but from the from the looks of it, it just looks more. Every, everybody hated it, but I watched some gameplay recently, and I thought it actually looked really interesting. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I think in the game it was just executed poorly because yeah. you needed certain stickers for certain bosses, and if you didn't have it, you had to go out and find it again and mm. that kind of thing. Mm. But it looks just rather than just a cut and paste RPG battle mechanic. This actually has some creativity to it. Yeah, some innovation. But and then, like you said, having the like the atmosphere and the the writing of the old games sounds really really good. And as well, I heard the music is just incredible. That's you, that's what you come to expect in a Nintendo game. Mm-hmm. Perfect like, music. N- no matter what you say about Nintendo games these days, like the music, just, they're just it's just flawless. Man, I'm like so into that. I I I really want to get on my iTunes just just you know. Just Nintendo music, you know, just every, you know, soundtracks from all the games, you know? You know, and just play them. That um, that mix you found on YouTube, mm. is it like an hour or like two hours of relaxing yeah. Nintendo music? Yeah. Um, freaking awesome. You, you can, you know, there's so many of those playlists where, you know, you can just sit there and listen to hours worth of Nintendo music. And, you know, there's just playlists of just relaxing Nintendo music, mm. like chill out music, where it's just all the soft, nice songs. And it's just, uh, it's, it's great. I had a, I came across an Animal Crossing um, piece of music on YouTube not long ago. <laughs> My coffee's very cold. <laughs> it's because of the fan that was on. Oh, nice. That was hard. That was hard. Okay, continue. <laughs> oh, your face. That was awful. Oh. Um, no, I came across a, a Animal Crossing song. Mm. Just makes me want to go play, go back and play that game again. Yeah, yeah. I miss Animal Crossing. How weird is that? Hey, you just hear something and you're like, wow, I want to play that again. I want to say it was like a little bit of nostalgia, even yeah. though that game isn't... It just... All the, all the good times I had with my my Animal Crossing. How often do you get the feeling when, you, when you're when you playing a game and the game that you're playing makes you want to play a different game? Um, good question. I, I always get that feeling, you know? And 
like it, I just put the game on and go, wow, this reminds me of another game that I really want to play. Now I don't really want to play this anymore, you know? Do you, and then when you think that, do you actively go out and play the other game? Yeah, I will. Yep. I put it on and I'm, and I'm in the mood for it. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Can you find an example? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of one, but... <laughs> No, I can't think of an example, but I always I always get it. I think I kind of get that when I sometimes, every now and again, I put Smash Bros on, mm. and I just look at the character list, and I'm like, yeah, I will play a Zelda game. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, I will, I will play Earthbound. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. I have an example for um, a book that I was reading. Oh, here we go. I was reading a book called A Wrinkle in Time. It's sort of like a sci-fi kind of um, futuristic kind of book. And as I was reading it, I was like, fuck sci-fi. <laughs> I really want to read something medieval. And so I bought the entire collection of Game of Thrones and I'm starting to read that. How are you going with that so far? Good. I'm almost finished book one. Oh, wow. It's really good. Good effort. Really good. I'm, I'm going to get through it. I'm probably going to stop after book one because I know if I get straight into book two, I think it'll be just too much. I think I need a, like a little break in between books. Fair enough. But um, after book one, I also bought the entire collection of Assassin's Creed books. Oh. So um, there's eight books for Assassin's Creed game. Uh, you know, the, the guy just writes them based off the games. Um, so okay. the first three books are, you know, the Ezio collection pretty much. So um, I'm going to read the first Assassin's Creed book and then I'll get back into Game of Thrones. So. Cool. Back to Game of Thrones, do you feel like you're better off since you watched the show? And just uh, to tell people, we will not talk about the, um, spoilers for the show because every single time I listen to a podcast and someone mentions Game of Thrones, I turn it off. Even if the even if spoilers, I I, I, I just can't do it because I haven't seen season six, so I, I don't I do not want to hear anything. Uh, okay. So what was the question again? Sorry. Um, <laughs> do you think you're better off having watched the show now reading the books? Yeah, I I don't think I could read the books if I hadn't seen the show because I really enjoy visualizing who the characters are, mm. um, just from the actors and. You know, knowing what their voices are like and everything, um, yeah. There, there's the the book is pretty much sticking to what the show is exactly. Mm. Like, there's not many scenes that um, have been left out because it is such a long show. They mm. can add pretty much everything in the book, but um, the first book isn't that big. The second book is massive, mm. so I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a lot of extra stuff in there that I haven't seen before. Yeah, but um, yeah, it helps so much knowing who the characters are. I, I hear they kind of. Um, get away from the book as the seasons progress. Yeah, I, I think um, as the, uh, yeah as the seasons progress, they sort of mix lots of books up. Okay. You know, like book three and four are sort of joined together, and there's I'm pretty sure um, the entire the entire you know the book that he's writing now, mm-hmm. the entire book six is um, just about a few characters and then the entire last book will be about the next set of characters but on the same timeline just because they wow. can't fit, all fit in the same book. So. That sounds cool. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool. So every every chapter is written from a different perspective. Mm. So, um, you know, each chapter title is called, you know, Jon Snow or um, Daenerys, you know. It's just f- written from their perspective. That happens now or well, that's what's going to be in the new book? No, that's, that's it, throughout the entire series. Oh, so each chapter is about a new, a different character. That sounds cool. Yeah, it is really cool. So maybe I should read these. Do it. It's awesome. You actually have the books. They're not iPad. No, no, I have all the books. Yeah, mm, perhaps. Um, so yeah, it's it's really cool. I started off. I bought the iPad version of the first book, but I was like, nah, I really want the hard copy of the book. Mm. So. so it's not a hard. Is it a hard read? Is it? It's um no. If you've seen the show, it's not a hard read. Mm. if you haven't seen the show yeah it's full on it's full on okay. like because there are so many characters yeah you forget how many characters there are and sometimes I forget some of the characters and when when they mention the name again I'll just type it into Google and then um, the person who plays the um, the actor who plays the character will come up and I, I'm reminded who that is okay. so it's really easy that way cool alright yeah so yeah. M- maybe because you, you you have stopped watching the show I'm up to season three. So maybe you should just read the books. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, back on topic. Last thing I want to mention about the uh, Nintendo Direct. Well, of course they talked about Pokemon Sun and Moon, but we won't really talk about that too much. We've talked about a lot of the, um, Sun and Moon on our podcast. and Actually, we're going to be talking about that a little later on, but not the game, the anime. 
Oh, okay. But the last thing I want to mention is the stupidity of bringing out a new Nintendo 3DS Galaxy version. What the hell is that? Isn't it just a, a reskin? But why? <laughs> I don't know. What, what is, what's significant about Galaxy? The only thing I can think of is Mario Galaxy, but it's got nothing to do with that. Yeah, they hyped it up kind of weirdly yeah they? they're just all going on about how cool this new 3ds system is it's a galaxy version but it's like it's just a different skin like do we have it's it not here? that cool do we have it here in australia uh, i think so i'm not sure i haven't really seen any advertisements or anything about it but honestly if i didn't if i didn't have if i didn't own a 3ds this would be the one i'd be drawn to it looks pretty cool <laughs> you're part of the problem why why it's, it's like what what's so good about it I don't know, it just looks sweet. Man, how cool would it be if they announced a Mario Galaxy version of the 3DS and everybody's gone crazy. Is this Mario Galaxy coming out on the 3DS? They would never do that. They wouldn't do it, but um, it'll drive people nuts. But did you think that when they announced the Galaxy version, did you ever consider, oh, this could be a hint for Mario Galaxy on the 3DS? Maybe. I I, I guess I thought about it, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it was just just an odd move. Yeah, I don't. I don't they I always just... they're bringing out like they've got new reskins for the for Pokemon. Yeah, the Pokemon one. Yeah, and then they've got a new two DS for the Pokemon. Mm. So, I don't know. Maybe remember I was saying a couple of weeks ago. Maybe I should just buy another Wii U console just to keep in storage, kind of thing. Just because. No, I don't remember you saying that. I was saying this. I was saying this on the podcast. Oh, okay. Maybe I wasn't dreaming. Anyway, <laughs> I was just dreaming of Wii U. <laughs> Um, I don't know, I, I remember saying this, um, that I'll go out and buy a Wii U console and just keep it locked away for... I don't think you should, just because once the NX comes out, I don't think you'll be playing Wii U. So I think once the NX comes out, you should just box up your Wii U and store it away and keep it safe that way. I mean, I'll do that, but I'll keep another one as well. <laughs> Why do you want two Wii U's? Collectors, keep it in the box. Well, if you do get two Wii U's... And you have the one in the box. You can sell that for like a thousand dollars twenty years down the track. Good point. But anyway, I was going to say maybe I should keep another three DS packed away as well. One of these, uh, one of these nice. Trust me, I've thought about that. Especially when I had that problem about my battery not charging. Oh yeah. Oh, that was scary. Um, you need a new three DS. No, you need a three DS XL. XL. Yeah. Oh, it's so I know. good. I know. All right, that was the Nintendo Direct. Um, wow, half an hour into the episode. Um, okay, we've got a bit more to talk about. Let's uh, get through this. Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. Have you seen the trailer? Absolutely not. Well, Jake, Pokemon is changing. The show is changing its formula. Okay, so the big thing here is the animation. It looks pretty good with X and Y right now. You know, it's looking pretty realistic. Ash looks taller. It looks more grown up. looks more mature. Um, you know, this is the first season where, where the people actually have fingernails this time. The, the animation is very detailed, okay? They've taken a big step back. Have you seen Yokai Watch? Uh-huh. Okay, how the faces are all round. They look very kiddish and everything's all sort of really sort of five-year-old kids. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what the animation is starting to look like with Pokemon Sun and Moon. Hang on. No, I have seen pictures of this. I thought that was for Pokemon Generations. No. Well, it could be, but um, have you seen Ash, though? Because Pokemon... Ash is not in Pokemon Generations. Uh, yeah, I've seen Ash. Yeah, he's got, like, a circle face now. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it just looks lazy. Yeah, well, I think I think they really are um, trying to sort of copy off Yokai Watch a little because Yokai Watch is so huge. Um, in Japan at the moment, I never, I never think to hear that Pokemon copying off Yokai Watch. Yeah, should be the reverse. I know exactly, but um, you know, Pokemon's been around, around for a while now. They might be starting to, starting to lose its audience. Not with the games, but maybe with the show. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's fine to change it up if if that's the way anim- if that's the way a- animation is going now. Yeah, if that's if that's you know the the style people will enjoy, then it's got to follow suit. I don't I guess. enjoy it. You don't. Could you imagine the outrage if they started doing Dragon Ball Super like that? <laughs> Ooh. But have you... Remember when Dragon Ball Super was first starting out and yeah. some episodes were really poorly yeah. drawn? They redid those episodes, though. Oh, really? Yeah, they redid them because of the outrage. <laughs> Do you still watch Super? Yeah. 
Yeah, they're up to episode 61 now. My God, I'm 60 episodes behind. Yes, good series. Um, No, sorry, go on. The biggest change of this Pokemon Sun and Moon formula is that Ash goes to school now. So Ash um, will usually go to a region and travel around the entire region, going from gym to gym. But this time he stays in the one spot, going to school. And I think um, people are saying sort of... There's only, I think, four gyms. And they're not called gyms, they're called something else. Yeah. But um, he will stay in school, that's his base. And then sort of every episode is like a new challenge that the school asks him to do. So he'll go out and then he'll return to the school. Then he'll go out and return to the school. That kind of thing. So it's kind of like Yokai watching away because Yokai Watch is based in one one city and he goes to school every day and everything. So I feel like Pokemon was so good because every episode was, has so much variety. Yeah. A new location every single episode. That's what I loved about Pokemon. Every episode, do you realize that every well, pretty much 90% of the episodes start off, it's like in the morning and then it ends in the evening yeah so in the morning they're sort of just starting traveling and then things happen and then they're you know meet people or whatever and then at the end of the episode they're saying bye to all the people that meet and the sun's going down god that's so it's like every one, episode it's like one whole day you know <laughs> um but this is a bit weird because they're not going to be traveling anywhere they're just going to be staying in one place or they, they do travel but they'll always be returning to that one place mm. um so i suppose the, the really big thing that has to make this work is the characters that he's surrounded by mm-hmm. and that really hasn't been announced who he's with yet but um, I really hope it's Brock <laughs> <laughs> I want, you know Pokemon's not good without Brock just saying fair enough yeah um, but you brought up Pokemon Generations as well have you seen anything with, uh, about that? Um, I should watch it because it's just on YouTube yeah I've seen the first episode it's about three minutes long um it's a really different take on what Pokemon is and it's actually really cool because you know Pokemon when we were growing up Pokemon was so big because it was just fucking cool like the battles we were like so obsessed with Charizard you know Charizard versus Magma we saw Mewtwo we're like wow that's fucking awesome um and it's kind of lost that in a way ever since ever since Pokemon advanced when May came in and then they started doing this Pokemon um you know the Pokemon contests Mm. yeah Pokemon's become not cool anymore it's become cute Mm. you know what I mean it's Mm -hmm. too cutesy now Pokemon Generations brings it back that first episode is just full of action just battles and everything and just looks awesome and um that's what it's kind of that's what the main series is kind of missing now but um yeah and the way they've done this is it starts off showing Pokemon Red the game and it shows like a whole battle of the game and then it just goes the screen goes into like into the show mm-hmm. and like yeah it's just it, you got to watch it it's really cool um and then he catches a pikachu but the pikachu you know obviously it's not the same show so it's not like pikachu or whatever mm-hmm. pikachu doesn't say pikachu it's sort of just got like a little mouse squeak it's like it sounds like it's saying pika but it's got like a little mouse squeak so it's really different and um, yeah, it's just the whole first episode is just Pikachu running around and battling these things in all the different regions. So it's really cool. And it's a really different take on it. It's really, you know, it's weird to see. So that's cool. Because yeah. the character's name is Red, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Mm. Um, and it's his first gen Pokemon? No, this, the first episode I think is an overview of what the whole series is going to be like because it shows Pikachu battling Pokemon in every single region up to Kalos. Wow, cool. So yeah, it is really cool. And um, it's based on the games as well. Nothing to do with the show. So it shows moments from the games. So you can battle the Red Gyarados and all that. And, oh, man, that sounds so and cool. And the Reggie, Reggie, I guess, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think it's a weird move just putting these for free on YouTube? Why do you reckon they did that? No idea. I, I don't know why they're sort of three minutes long as well. So there was no talking in the first episode. So I don't know if there's talking in the later ones, you know. They're, they're like up to episode six or seven now, so... I don't know. I'm sure there is talking, so... Do you think it's dubbed as well, if there is talking? Oh, probably, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Pokemon is... As you said, it's just in a in a stage of transition, I think. Mm. With Sun and Moon, is, is it seems like a big focal point of... This This is where the series is, is taking a turn. Mm-hmm. And who knows, it's for the, it, who knows if it is for the best? Mm. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. More Pokemon news... Um, 
Do you know when Pokemon Sun and Moon comes out, you can trade your Pokemon Yellow, po- Pokemon Yellow, Red and Blue Pokemon to that game? Mm-hmm. Sounds like you can only do that in January 2017. The Pokemon Bank will be updated in January 2017. Yes. And that's when you can do it. Yep. So that's pretty annoying because I thought, you know, straight away, day one, you can just do that. I mean, it gives everyone a chance to actually play through Sun and Moon before you can... Yeah, I guess that's true. So you don't just day one, you just trade all your like level hundreds <laughs> over. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, you wouldn't be able to actually use them anyway because you wouldn't be able to well, that's fair enough. control them. But, um, yeah, no, this actually gives me some time because I was planning on getting Pokemon Sun and Moon uh, for Christmas. So Christmas? You're not doing it day one? No. Because I got Pokemon X and Y for Christmas. So uh, I was want to relive those days man that would be a good Christmas day though it would be give me something to think about now Scott yes yeah I do want a day one it though I know that's the thing I want a day one it 30 hours wait it's 24 hours in a day but... <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to um, I was talking to Kian you've had him on the podcast he, previously he has been on the podcast the anime nerd yes <laughs> and um, obviously he's getting both versions day one. Oh no no Kian oh and then so I've been playing Bioshock yeah. recently i finished the first one last night mm-hmm. didn't, realize, didn't realize how short those games were really pretty quick oh um i beat that well i did pretty i did stretch it out but maybe 15 hours how weird is that hey games are just getting longer and we don't even notice yeah, yeah. i mean it i i didn't mind that it was like a, it was actually felt like a really good time because yeah. it's game, yeah. story and, and everything but uh yeah i was talking to Keanu about it and he was like, I was telling him about Bioshock even before it came out. I'm like, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Are you going to get it? He's like, no, I've already, play- I've already played those games before. I'm not going to worry about it. And then I was talking to him during the week. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got it this week. I'm already, I'm already about to finish number two. I'm like, yep, as expected. Yeah, Kian just um, gets every game that comes out, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> doesn't play much in the night. Fuck you, Kian. <laughs> Fuck you. But- All right. No, sorry, I just want to talk about... Oh, sorry, Bioshock. yeah, continue. It's good. I love Bioshock. Yeah. Um, you played all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've played number one and two, Never Touched Infinite, as we all know. Infam- infamously Never Touched It. Yeah. I, I, lo- I enjoyed number two a lot more. The beginning of number one was really amazing. Just be- You know how you start off in the aeroplane, you fall down to the, the water, and then you have to swim to the... That was really that was an awesome opening to a game because it was so it was just so simple mm. like how it starts off and then um, you know you get into the elevator and then you go down to the water and then that's how it just the whole journey just starts mm-hmm. that was an amazing start to the game an amazing finish to the game was Bioshock 2 remember how um, we can talk about spoilers can't we it's Bioshock 2 <laughs> sure um, so yeah how what, what's the deal with the whole was it the big white you know how everything looked all modern, but it was big oh, white curtains or something yeah. down the sides of the walls and all that. Yeah. You're walking through like that. That was cool. I remember that. And then you finally get to go above the water at the end of number two. Oh, I don't remember that. Well, you got to play it again sometime. Yeah, well, of course I am. I have it. But, um, no, I, I, everyone talks about how great the story is in Bioshock, and it is, but mm. it's, it's one of those things where... I have to, now that I've finished the game, I have to go and read or watch a recap of the story, like an explanation. Because oh, yeah. I understand the story, but there's there's so much um, foreshadowing happening through the game. So much lore. So, yeah. And then, so I just need someone to just say like, yeah. And then what this guy was saying at the beginning of the game relates to this thing that happened at the end. Yeah. And, and You enjoy story. it more when you actually understand everything about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm keen, I'm very excited to play them all back to back because mm. I think that's a really cool way of playing these kinds of games. Mm. Yeah, nerd. Thanks. All right, last piece of Pokemon news. Um, nobody really talked about this, but I want to talk about it. The um, Team Galactic theme was released on the eShop for your 3DS. So you know mm. your background theme. Team Galactic is the team from Pokemon diamond does that say anything you're talking about a, a remake oh come, yeah come on why would they release a team galactic theme jake the galaxy 3ds <laughs> <laughs> something's 
It's all foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying something. It's got to. It's got to be something, Jake. Nobody's talking about it. You heard it here first on the four one one folks. Man, I'm so excited for um, a remake of it though. Yeah. Di- Pearl and Diamond. NX. <sighs> it's got to be. We'll move on. What's the theme like though? What's it? Do you? Have... I don't know. I didn't say it. No. The only reason I, I put two and two together because at the time I was watching Pokemon Diamond the series and I was like, wait a second. I put two and two together. I'm a pretty smart guy. Well done. <laughs> Um, so Nintendo announced <coughs> a new mobile game uh, so the first one was Miitomo it was widely acclaimed mm-hmm. critically acclaimed game it's very popular the new one is Super Mario Run um, Jake prediction do you think this will sell more than Pokemon Go Ooh. I wouldn't say sell. I mean, download more. Downloaded more. No, because people, you have to buy this. Yeah, I know, but um, that's the only thing that will make it less. Yeah, I think. But um, do you think that sort of Mario is more widely known than Pokemon? Oh uh, yeah, uh, yes. Mario, yes. I don't think <laughs> anymore. I think maybe ten years ago. You could say the same thing about Pokemon. Pokemon's just gotten a lot more popular. Mario, yeah. S- since the 20th anniversary, since all that shit happened, mm. I think it's just gotten out of control, Pokemon, now. But people have been asking for a Mario game, a 2D Mario side-scroller, on the mobile f- since the iPhone came out, the original iPhone. Yeah, you know? and this cops so much hate, I, I saw, because it's just... Everyone's like, oh, endless run are boring. <laughs> but that's that's how you should make this game. Yeah, it's so it looks so simple and so fun. Yeah, this is the right way to do it. Yeah, I'm so excited for this actually. I'm not going to get it, but um, oh, really? It's uh, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's good to see. You I, know, I think I, I've, I've never been a supporter of the mobile no. Nintendo f- games, but um, this actually this looks cool and um, it's a good idea. Mm. But I'm confused. Why they called it Super Mario Run when in the game you're not running? You're jumping. So why couldn't they call it Super Mario Jump? You're running. You're not jumping all the time. No, but you're not You're not running. Like, you're not controlling the running. You're controlling the jumping. Yeah. So why is it called Super Mario Run? Because it's an endless runner. No, the endless jumper. Sequel will be called Super Mario Jump. You just wait. You heard it here first on the 411 more folks. Exclusive. Jesus. Let's talk about Metroid Prime Federation Force. <laughs> <laughs> silence <laughs> so um yeah we we gave this game a, a big 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 rap um we ca- it came out um we actually still haven't played it i tried to play the campaign by myself once but it was fucking hard and we haven't had time to play it together yet so we're still going to do that but we can't really give a full in-depth review no right now but I, what I can talk about is Blast Ball because I've played 10 hours of Blast Ball. Oh my god. And um, I actually haven't played it in quite a long time, but within the first, I think, three or four days, yeah, 10 hours into Blast Ball. Solid. Sounds good. I started off sucking at that game. Like, I, I couldn't win. My points were going down, and I was losing points like a motherfucker, and I just kept losing and losing. And then, for some reason, I just got good at it, and then I was undefeated. Like, I had... <laughs> Nobody could touch me. Maybe you're just versing noobs at it. It started off because I got it pretty much... What, we got it day one, didn't we? Or no, maybe uh, a week later or something? A few days after? I got... No, I bought, I bought yours day two. Yeah. Because they only had one damn copy at the store. Oh, so mad. Uh, and I got mine during the week. So the funny thing about this game is when I started playing online, there are a lot of English players online. After about a week... It was all Japanese players. Mm. And I never saw an English player again. It was all Japanese. Were you playing at the same time? Same time of day? Yeah. Oh, well, just all over the place, really. But, um, yeah, day and night. Mm. I don't know. Well, I, I tried to play online. Mm. Uh, I waited a whole hour waiting in the room. Uh, yeah, that's never happened to me. I've been straight in all the time. People were dropping in and out. You couldn't. You, I just couldn't get a game. Okay, what made me really uh, curse to the to the Lord himself with this game is um, when you've got a full game with people, right? 
Um, I was winning like three or four games in a row because in the other team, there was one person who'd obviously moved away from their 3DS and he was just standing there. Uh. So there was just two against three, really. But when it happens to you, you get fucking angry. <laughs> when one of your teammates doesn't fucking move and it's two against three and you're losing because of him, yeah, that makes you angry. Mm. So um, that's really stupid. Maybe they should bring out an update. I don't know if it has yet because I haven't played in a while, but they should do an update where they can check if someone's not moving then take him out of the game, bring in a bot. Because when the game is not full, they do bring in a bot. The bots are actually really good as well. That's a good point. So. Yeah. They um they have that and like penalize the guy who left. Yeah. Obviously, because they have that in Halo Five. Yeah. Um if um if you're like stationary, obviously if you're not moving, mm-hmm. uh, it recognizes and it pulls you out and it like penalizes you and Yeah. So you start off with a thousand points and um every time you lose, depending on how well you did, I guess, if you got if you scored a few goals, it made a few assists and you still lose, maybe you'll lose two or three points. But if you just played like shit, you'll lose like ten, fifteen points, right? So I started off with a thousand, I was down to six hundred and something. Oh my god. When I was starting to lose, right? And then I brought myself back up to about nine hundred and sixty. So I was getting close, right? And then I had the experience where one of the players wasn't doing anything. So I was like and I was losing like two or three in a row and I was got my points were going down I'm like I can't do this anymore so I had to get out of the I got out mid game and when I got back in I realised I lost about a hundred points for quitting mid game oh my god so I was ropeable because <laughs> I had to get out I was going to lose again but you know I didn't know I didn't know I'd lose that many points it's got the point system where like same as Mario Kart same as Mario Kart 8 yeah yeah, yeah. What, I, I forgot how many points I have in that now man you, you were getting points left right and centre when you started yeah you wouldn't be good anymore though <laughs> no I wonder if people still play that I'm sure they would it's a good game awesome game I, I just watched you play that for hours it's one of my most played yeah alright anything else you want to say about Madrid Prime um yeah I mean I, I've actually only I played the tutorial again it just came out the very wrong time um when's the right time for you Jake never yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know. So many games are coming out. Do you just wish, like, 2018, nothing came out? So we could just play games, like the ones that we have? I want the South Park game to come out, come out, and that's it. Then I'll be set. I want Skyrim to come out. That's this year, it. isn't it? Yeah, that's this month. Oh, shit. It's coming up. I'm excited. I feel like no one's talking about it. No, I haven't heard much chatter about it either. It's Skyrim, so... Blech. Fuck you. <laughs> Let's talk about PS4 Pro. We haven't talked about this on this show. Mm. Any thoughts on this? I really don't have many thoughts on it. It's a bit pointless, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did, I did watch a YouTube video about it, and it's like... I don't even think it supports 4K... Really? Don't quote me on this. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it because we just don't know enough yeah, about it. Yeah, because I, I know the one Xbox One S. What's it called? Xbox One S. Yeah, yeah. that does 4K, doesn't it? Yep. yep. And the Scorpio thing that's going to come out, obviously. S- Scorpio is like this overpowered thing. Like, it's it's massively overpowered. Overpowered? Yeah, as in, like, it's, it's fucking... Yeah, it's a good, like... Okay. That's why um, people were saying, you know... PS4 Pro was going to be announced sooner, but they, they delayed the announcement because Scorpio was announced with all its specs and everything, and they were mm. going, shit, we can't match that. Mm. So they went back to the drawing board kind I of thing. F- I finally feel like this is where, you know how PS4 has always been in the lead in the competition? Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is where Xbox is going to turn it around. Yeah. Because PS4, I th- or Sony, I should say, have shot themselves in the foot with this PS4 Slim thing. Yeah. And the Pro, because they are... S- it looks to me they are essentially the same console. Mm. They look exactly the same. It's, just, it's PS4 Pro is a double. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's just like like a double cheeseburger. Yeah, you like just they just top. stacked. They just like yeah. glued a PS4 on top of it. But um, I I don't I, like PS4 was selling so well. Why like announce a PS4 Pro unless it's massively overpowered like Scorpio will be? Yeah, you know I don't understand that. I, again, the whole the whole discussion of I, I just don't understand why people need have a need to have a slightly more powerful 
consoles yeah. and run games yeah. even slightly better. Who cares? Yeah, I don't You're know. still getting great games. The only reason I got an Xbox One S is because it's smaller and I needed to fit it more concisely on my shelf. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I wanted to get rid of that massive brick. Mm. So that's gone now. I don't think I'll buy another Xbox. No. Unless there's exclusive games for the Scorpio that I really want. I, uh, yeah, that's another thing. They always and they've said that PS4 Pro won't have exclusive games, mm. but I feel like it, I feel like it it might. I feel like there's going to be one or two. Yeah, even if it's like a PSVR yeah thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I, I will put I will put money on this is where Microsoft are going to turn around, mm-hmm. and in the end, when it comes to the end of this end of this quote unquote console cycle or whatever the hell they're doing now. I feel like Microsoft will be at the top mm. because I, I agree. Yeah, my, they, they, they just and on top of all of that, an X. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please bring us back to the heyday. Uh, speaking about VR, let's talk about VR. That's out now. No way, is it? Uh, in America, it is. I don't know if it's out now in Australia, but um, yeah, people have tried it out in America. I, I saw a review of VR and. People have been playing some games. Um, yeah, the consensus f- from what I get from watching all these reviews is that this machine is it's just a prototype at the moment. Like, it's like, you know, the original iPhone. Mm. They're going to release more versions and it's going to get better and better and better. So unless you really just want to be one of those people who can say, I've tried out the very first PS- PSVR, then get this one. Otherwise, just wait until they, you know, bring out the better versions. Yeah. And this is a really expensive device, but it's not something that's going to replace what you do with your, you know, your normal controller and your console. Mm. This is just an added thing that you're going to gain. So if you get this thing, don't don't just sell your PS4 or Xbox One or whatever, because this is not going to replace that. Mm. You're st- everybody's still going to sit down with a controller on the couch and just play games normally. This is just an added thing. So and and it's not something that you're going to do every day. This is just you know, people people are saying they get dizzy so much that it's, it wears you out. Mm. Like if you put that headset on and play for a good half an hour, you're going to be more exhausted than you are just sitting there playing on the couch because it is so, you know, mentally draining. People mm. aren't used to doing this. Mm. It's a new thing that people have to get used to. Mm. Do, so. you feel, do you think? Because um, this is the first. Uh, there's been VR headsets out for a long time now. The Oculus Rift and the the Vive or whatever it's called Mm. whatever Um, but this is the real first and those only work on PCs and really really, you have to have a huge good PC to to run it Um, so that's a lot of money but this is the first real consumer friendly product of VR Um, it's like when they first brought out computers people didn't use them Right. You know, at, at their homes, but then they started to. Right. It's, it's like, kind of like that. And in saying that, it will it will sell a lot because I'm not sure what the price point is, but because it, it it is so much. I know it is so much more cheaper than buying out or getting a really good PC and having an Oculus with it. If you have a PS4, this is just automatically works with it. Mm. So, For us, we'd have to buy a PS4 first. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, but I still, like you were saying, I still think it's it's so gimmicky at this point still. Mm-hmm. And I think, again, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put another bet on this. Um, it's gonna die in the water, much like Connect did. Connect was a huge phase. Um, it didn't have the proper games for it. The games I've been seeing for this for VR are just one-off experiences like for that. For now, though. Yeah. I think in a couple of years you'll see some really good games, and I think developers are waiting for maybe another uh, the next version of VR so they can do what they want mm. and maybe they're waiting for PS4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio so they have more freedom in their hardware um, and oh, oh sorry go on yeah, go, yeah you go oh well I was just going to say do you think they're making Scorpio ready for whatever what's the Microsoft version of their I thought it was Oculus Oculus yeah maybe I thought they were developing like an uh, um, augmented reality Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, like that Minecraft demo that we saw. Yeah, yeah. damn, what is that called? Yeah, I don't know. Either way, do you think Scorpio is built is going to be built ready for that, having that capability? Most definitely, yep. Yeah, sorry, go back to what you said. Um, what was I saying before I was rudely interrupted? Mm. 
Fuck's sake, Jake. <laughs> Fucking killing me here. <laughs> anyway, but the, the games I have seen, I saw a little bit of that Until Dawn thing. Yeah. That just yeah. looks... I don't know what the hell that is. On rails, the thing. Spooky jump scares. Um, Resident Evil 7. Ooh, Come on. Ouch. That's going to be fucking awesome. I'd rather, sh- I'd rather kill myself than play that. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. As in, it's going to be amazing. That's what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I mean... Because you sounded like, no, this is going to be shit. No. It, no. Oh, my God. Just thinking about it. Yeah. Um, But, I, you know, to be honest, I really think, um, yeah, VR is the first step for, like, for gaming, I guess. But this... VR is going to take on... M- more than gaming it's going to be used for so much more like it's going to be like a kind of a tourist attraction thing where they can make a thing where you can explore space Mm -hmm. you know you can put it on and it's like you're in space or you can put it on and you can go to japan or something and it's like you're walking around japan i've um it's so funny seeing i've been seeing um just news reports on like abc news and stuff and channel 7 news Mm. of like it was when uh, recently EB Games had an expo in Sydney and they didn't they sent a reporter out and it's so funny because obviously the news report is trying to it's trying to s- simplify gaming to <laughs> to the masses yeah, yeah, like, yeah virtual reality is is the new way in technology for video gaming yeah, I'm yeah. Just, just sitting there like and I, I could just imagine like 60 year olds like like oh wow this look at this honey <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is the future yeah um i don't know i, I was just, and it just made me think like it, it must be so weird because we're we're actively you know we play games and we're actively involved in gaming news and and mm. stuff and know what's going on but it must be so weird being outside that circle mm, mm. and not knowing about vr not knowing about and then just, I wonder what that. Well, a lot of, is. I think a lot of people are going to think this is stupid because people are going to say, "Oh, this is what every single gamer is going to do now. No one's going to sit on their couch and just play games like normal." Hmm. But I think twenty years from now, people are still going to be sitting on their couch playing games just with a controller. Hmm. Um, VR is always just going to be an added thing. Hmm. Like you can do that as well, but most games are still going to come out just normal controller and everything. For sure. Um, yeah, oh, I, was, I had something else to say as well. Great, all right. <sighs> it was a really good point, but... Um, Would you... Could you see yourself... Oh, sorry. Oh, go. Heard um, someone make a really good uh, point, a similarity, right? Back in the day when games first came out, you had a controller with just two buttons and a D-pad and maybe a start button, right? Mm. When the joystick came out, that was revolutionary because it was that was the first time you could maybe explore a 3D world kind of thing. This is like the next level of that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people were saying maybe the joystick was like a gimmick kind of thing. That's not going to last. Because it's so new and it's like, well, what, you know, people had a hard time controlling that thing. Mm. VR is like the same thing, I reckon. Kind of like in the same way, um, kind of the Wii re- uh, really commercialized motion control for yeah, gaming. Yeah, yeah. And then now maybe motion cr- motion control isn't so much of a big deal. It's just, it's just integrated. Mm very in small parts into gaming like your 3ds has got gyro um i don't know i want to say maybe i think ps ps4 like i think if you like move with the controller some oh, yeah, games yeah, it moves. yeah yeah that kind of thing it's not like like you said it's like first it was gimmicky first it was yeah. a whole console based around mo- motion now it's now they've taken the best parts of it mm. and just added in well with vr i mean you only have the one joystick now, you know how you used to having two. The one joystick is for moving, via, and then to look around, you use your head. You just mm. look around like that, mm. and all you have to do is control in the movement. Eventually, I think they're going to get to the stage where you can control movement without a joystick. I don't know how that's going to look, but it's going to be you have no joysticks. Maybe you think it, and it happens. <laughs> that's fucked. <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's just a hand movement that you can like. This is go forward, but. But then you need... I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. Maybe, Maybe if you just put your put one foot out and just tap tap your foot on something mm. and that's moving forward and then you can stop by putting your foot back. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I feel like that's... I don't want to do that, you know? 
Nobody does. No. Okay. We're just coming up with ideas here. Great. Okay. Can you see yourself if you if you had a PS4 or if you're ever going to buy one? Can you see yourself purchasing VR? Yeah. Um, I would really. Uh, I'd wait until version two or version three comes out, mm. and I'd wait until a really good game game comes out. But yeah, I really want one. I don't think it's ever going to happen because I don't want to buy a PS4 and then a VR, and then you also have to buy the PlayStation camera as well. Mm. And um, yeah. don't you have to buy the Move controllers as well? Yeah. Yeah. All that shit. Ugh. It's just. There's a like, lot of shit you have to buy. Like we were saying before with the games, there's no... If you're saying PSVR is out right now, or soon, very soon, I haven't seen a game that is such a selling point for VR. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we had Wii Sports. Mm. And that was that was one of the best-selling video games in, in history. Mm. But VR hasn't... I'm sure the games it comes with is, is a really good way of experiencing VR for the first time and what you do, but there's nothing... I don't know, truly, that makes me want to have to go out and get VR. Mm. I don't know. There's that Batman thing, but... Yeah, you can play that, yeah. I don't know. But again, you know, the, the graphics... I mean, like, so far the games that have come out, the graphics are sort of, you know, not that great. So the worlds that you're in, I mean, you feel immersed because it's all around you, but, you know, you're in this sort of cartoonish kind of world. Mm. That's why I think... Um, as. as uh, until the graphics get really in, um, you know, detailed in the VR world, I think the the best experiences are going to be when you know they film something with you know 4K technology and you can put it on and you're in that world. You know, mm. you can walk around and you're there or something. Mm. So that's why I think it's going to really, really go well. You know, I was walking in the shops the other day uh, during the school holidays. Um, it was just in the Rubina Town Centre and. Um, they had this station set up for kids where the kids could put on, the, on this headset. I don't know if it was a VR headset, but it was like a it was like a VR headset kind of thing or Oculus or whatever. Mm. But they um, it was in this dinosaur world, so the kids could have a turn of putting it on, and then all the kids were like, going, "Whoa!" They like, <laughs> just looking around, and they're in this sort of forest with dinosaurs. And all that. It was really cool. Yeah, unhygienic. Yeah, I know. that's a, that's the problem. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, let's uh, let's wrap that up. Um, just got three more points to talk about Go first one um dragon ball fusions the 3ds game was announced for a worldwide release so it will be coming to australia i've seen um there's this channel on youtube called team forza who, do, who did a abridged version of dragon ball z mm. uh and they put up a video of gameplay of it so they must have got an early release co- copy or maybe the japanese version or yep. something I haven't watched it but I, I still don't know what this game is i don't know either I know it's it's like sort of a... It's not like just one of your things where you just battle each other. I, I'm pretty sure you can fly around and go to different worlds kind of thing, which is awesome because not many Dragon Ball Z games do that. Yeah. Like Xenoverse, you've got a hub world, but that's about it. But um, yeah, that's, every time something like that comes out and it's really exciting, it reminds me of Legacy Goku. Oh, man. So good. So, but um, yeah, it looks really cool. The, the chibi animation things are a bit meh, but... Um, the thing where you can just fuse any character is sounds cool. Yeah. Are you excited at all for Xenoverse 2? No. Yeah. I uh, people, people are going on about how cool this looks, you know. It looks just like the show. That's what I see a lot of topics are. This Xenoverse 2 looks just like the show. But I watch gameplay. It looks exactly like Xenoverse 1. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I bought Xenoverse 1 day one and I was really excited for it. And I played it and it was awesome. I played about 30 hours of it and I haven't picked it up since. Like, that, I've got no motivation to pick it up. Mm. Just because I'm not really into the fighting style games anyway. But um, I really want to be into Xenoverse 2. But I'm just I'm just not. It just I, looks the same. I'm so confused with what they do with Dragon Ball games. Because Dragon Ball Z games, whatever. But because when Xenoverse was announced, it was like... The, the, like, yeah, this is the turning point for Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball games. It's yeah. like a new revolution. And then... And then they just hammer that idea into the ground like they did with the the Budokai games. Yeah, yeah. It was like, yep, this is a new revolution of Dragon Ball games. And there was like six or seven of those games. Or yeah. How many? Then there was the Budokai Tenkaichi games. And the, mm-hmm. and then I feel like this is what they're going to do with the Xenoverse games. They're just going to... Well, there was Raging Blast from Raging Blast 2. So maybe they'll stop at Xenoverse 2. Maybe. I don't know. Xenoverse sold a lot of copies. That's why there's Xenoverse 2 so fast. Xenoverse, if Xenoverse 2 sells a lot, then they'll come out with Xenoverse 3. I mean, it just all depends on what, how it sells. I mean, I'm interested. I was interested in the first Xenoverse. It just... I don't know why I didn't pick it up, actually. It's one of those games that just never came down in price. 
if you didn't get the original Xenoverse, I suggest you get Xenoverse 2. Do you know what they're doing differently? The hub world is a lot bigger, like a lot bigger, which is cool because you get to just walk around and everything. And this time, instead of walking and running around, I think you can fly around the hub world, which is really cool. Um, but I think there's a new story. Um, I don't really know. That doesn't sound much to warrant a sequel. Yeah. Whatever. I'll right. see how it goes. It, I don't know. I, I know it's coming out this year. I'm not exactly sure when. I think it's soon. Yeah. Oh, no. Actually, I looked at this the other day. It's um. I think it's the same day as Skyrim at the end of this month. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, the Ezio Collection Remastered has been announced. Do you feel like this went under the radar? Yeah, nobody's talking about no it. No one talks about it. And when I watched the trailer as well, I couldn't see any gameplay of re- of it being remastered. Any nowhere in the trailer as well did it say it was remastered. It just said the Ezio Ezio collection for Xbox One and PS4. Well, remember the Ezio collection already came out. From... I know that's the thing. It could be just the port. Ugh. And I tried to look up recently, um, a couple of days ago, more game uh, gameplay to see if they've announced anything else, but. People were saying that the actual trailer, the clips that they used were from the PC version. Oh. Okay. So, I don't know. I'm not going to get this unless it's been fully remastered with good graphics. Like, I, I don't want, like, a full-on redo of the game. I just want an upscaled yeah. version or, like, you know, just better graphics. I'm sure they would. I'm I sure d- they would. I-, I need to see proper gameplay before I get it because I've got all the original SEO collection on my PS3 and I'm fine with that I can just play that whenever because it's already hooked up but I'm not g- gonna get this unless yeah you need it It needs to do something for you to yeah buy it again when's the last time you played Assassin's Creed 2 you've only played that once haven't you yeah well I played it maybe a year ago or something and that game is dated mm. you look up at the sky the sky looks like shit it's pretty bad yeah, it's uh, so weird because it's kind of it's quite blurry and everything, and so, I don't know, it's it's dated a lot. It's so weird because because we were, I remember talking about this very early in podcast days where we were saying because the Assassin's Creed movie, yeah, and then the perfect way for perfect way people are going to go see that movie and they're like, wow, Assassin's Creed, this is really cool. I'll mm. go look at the games. Yeah, yeah. And the Ezio collection, obviously, the best three games in the series. Mm. Um, that's the best way for people to. Di- uh, ingest that ingest Assassin's Creed but if there's not gonna I don't know they're not gonna do anything radically different to the games then are people gonna be burnt by that I, I hope there's a massive difference to be honest because when we first played the games it looked amazing remember Brotherhood you can go through the, the long big grass fields no that game was so boring <sighs> you piss me off sometimes <laughs> last piece of news is that it looks like there's no there's going to be no Assassin's Creed game next year. Oh, really? It looks like it's going to be 2019. Well, they said that... Um, 18? Oh, sorry, 18. Yeah, sorry. So, um, they said originally it was going to be skipping 2016, bring it out 2017. But now they're saying that if we need more time, we won't hesitate to just push it to 2018 because we want to spend time on this new game. So I don't mind that. I'm neither do right. I. Um, because you know, I, I I I had a massive break from Assassin's Creed after Black Flag, and I didn't play Unity and Syndicate. <laughs> you said Black Flag. What? Yeah, he said Black Flag. <laughs> Stop being so. That's that's just cruel, Jake. Oh, you said it. And then I picked up Unity and Syndicate after a year. No, it was more than a year. And then I played Syndicate, and I was like, still, uh, I still need a break from it. Mm. So yeah. I'm still happy to wait even longer than more uh, a year now. So, do you have another big phase with the Syndicate? Like you, you're actually kind of enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, I've I've played a good, you know, thirty hours of it, and I'm still going with it. But I Oof. haven't I haven't played it in a while. Um, but yeah, I'm mm. enjoying it. Mm. So, I um, they've been putting out um, a, a YouTube, some YouTubers have had time with Watch Dogs too. Mm. Some people have been putting out um. Uh, version uh, gameplay of that game that actually looks really freaking cool yeah yeah I really um, Watch Dogs 2 is on my list to actually get yeah so um, yeah it's um, it's a Ubisoft game it's one of those you know you have a big world map with lots of things to collect on it so but um, I don't mind 
doing that. And... I just uh, the setting looks really cool, and um, I don't know, just the way you can the whole, the whole hacking thing. Yeah, they've really upped it, upped it in this one. Mm. It looks really cool. Yeah, and people were always saying, you know, the original Watch Dogs is like the original Assassin's Creed. The sequel would be a major step above, and it looks like. I mean, I, I don't think it's a, it's a the difference between Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed Two, but it looks a lot better. Mm. Yeah, they just... they needed a new character as well, and this guy looks pretty cool. And yeah, yeah. So, did you play the first one? No, I never played it. No, it was always a game for me. Or like, yeah, I'll get it. Like, oh, yeah. it's twenty bucks, I'll get it. But I think they devalued it when they made it so cheap so quickly. Deval? Yeah, that's a good point. Like, now you can pick well, it up for like ten bucks. It's like, yeah. Well, everyone just everyone just hated on it. Well, yeah. not hated, it's just like mediocre. It got too much hype too early. Yeah, that's true. But no, this one. Yeah, this one seems like they're redoing all the things that mm. plague the series and just doing it better. Yeah. yeah. So that that is the gaming news that we have missed in the past month, Jake. I feel satisfied now that we um, got all that out of our systems, and now we can continue with our um, with our shows as normal. Um, each one of those topics, well, most of those topics, I could have spent dedicated a whole show to, but um, we just moved through them quite quickly. So. Um, That'll bring us to the end of episode 27. And um, we will see you again next week. Or maybe in a few seconds. Uh. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, bye. <laughs>